Do you believe that you can heal yourself? Too often we give our power away to something outside of ourselves and rarely, if ever, trust and tap into our innate healing power and intuition. Everyone has this capability to heal in ways we never thought possible. It's your sovereign right to claim and have true health and lasting wellness. Now, here is the host of the Dr. Dolores Show, Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in our amazing world. Welcome to another episode of the Dr. Dolores Show on Inspired Choices Network. And I'm Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. And we're going to be talking about a topic um, about being perfect. So the name of our episode is Help. Being perfect is ruining my life. Does that really sound like you sometimes? I mean, really. Many of us have taken on the persona that everything needs to be perfect. And did you ever wonder why, what's underneath all of that? It's really kind of daunting when you think about it. And, you know, this morning when I was doing my uh, med- my daily meditation and going within, and sometimes I do some automatic writing, um, it was interesting because I got some huge insights that I just would like to share with everybody because I think it will put um, a better perspective and understanding of what the whole drive of being perfect is all about. So it says perfectionism. It robs the joy out of life. It is the cover up of some deep seated hurts or woundings uh, that one has gone through. It cannot be um, heard. It, it Sometimes it's about not being heard, accepted, valued, respected, loved, or appreciated, or even worthy. The common response is, if I were perfect, then I will be loved, worthy, and accepted, and you can add whatever else you want. Yet no matter how perfect you are, the, the bar continues to be rise due to the lack of knowledge acknowledgement that drives the need to be perfect so it's like a vicious cycle this is an external game that many of us have played throughout our lives it has driven us to be overachievers high achievers and in the appearance of being successful to the outer world yet inside we are flailing ourselves due to the dis, uh, the disconnect that we have with our true worth and only causes from it only causes from within when we are able to tap into our inner wisdom and support the external world no longer matters and indeed it doesn't and it doesn't based on the validation you receive when you are perfect. So that was really interesting when we've gotten to the point where it's like this game is kind of going on on the outside and there's this another game going on the inside and there's a total disconnect. So it is as if you are trying or attempting to fill a hole in yourself that will never fill up due to the lack of connection you have with yourself. That's something to ponder. You have given that responsibility too often to others to an attempt to heal this for you. Your woundings can only be healed by going within and embracing all of the challenges and even those things you choose not to embrace but ignore late or the ones that you label as unpleasant there are those aspects of you that have fractured off from your soul's essence and that's something really important to consider all that is needed is that is to love them those fractured pieces unconditionally accepting and loving and appreciating them for what and who they are and who probably who they what they have taught us and allowing them to re-engage with yourself to become whole and complete. So that was this morning's channeling for myself. And 
I'll tell you, it was perfect for what we're <laughs> perfect. It was actually perfect for what we're going to be talking about today on the Dr. Dolores show. Um, you know, I know many of us are um, either perfectionists, reco uh, recovering perfectionists, or we're in toxic perfectionism, which we're going to talk about a little more in the show. But, you know, what I think is really important and what needs to be talked about here is that some of the, you know, some of the reasons why someone would want to be perfect, okay? Many of us have had some very challenging um, childhoods or even, you know, when we were even conceived, our parents were going through massive challenges within their world. And, you know, we have to remember that everything is energy and we're energetic beings. And even though we are you know, still in embryo, basically, or two cells when the sperm and the egg come together and we're starting to be created, we are an energetic being at that point. So we take on a lot of stuff energetically in our environment, unbeknownst to us. It's like we're hanging out in this energy and, and a lot of times there's no discernment of where we end and something else ends energetically. And so we have a tendency to take on things even when we're two cells as a, 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 a human being, or if it's an animal, it's an animal. Whenever those two, the sperm and the egg come together, we are created in as an energetic being. And that's just not only us as humans, it's animals, it's our, it's, you know, plants, it's whatever it is in this world. We are all energy and energetic beings. So when we, um, strive to be perfect sometimes there's some other things going on here and i just want to address some of them because i think for the audience i think it's important to know that um, the desire to be perfect can stem from various psychological social and culture factors and some of the reasons why we strive for perfection is that we have set high personal standards and we have a lot of ambition people with strong inner drives and high personal standards must push themselves forward towards perfection to achieve their goals and fulfill their potential. But I also ask at what cost to the person? Sidebar. Fear of failure is another thing that um, strives people to be perfect. The fear of making mistakes or facing failure can drive individuals to pursue perfection as a mean, uh, means of avoiding negative con outcomes and consequences and basically maintaining control over their lives. And I think that's what we're kind of be we're going to be addressing today, because that whole aspect of fear of failure, uh, it's the underlying um I want to say hot plate that, you know, it's just like, oh, no, I don't want to go there. So it's just like, let's pretend everything's fine and perfect and just, just, you know, uh, and so it, it's really interesting. We never address the, our whole fear of failure concept too. desire for approval and validation. Many of us have grown up in households where we were never um, allowed to be who we truly were. We were supposed to be shape shifted into something that, our parents wanted, our family of origins wanted, even society wanted, but never our true essence. So we, in order to fit in, we developed this coping mechanism of being perfect because gosh forbid, if we were perfect, they, how could they not love us and appreciate us and respect us? So that's something to interesting too, that, that that's another dance that kind of goes on. Insecurity and low self-esteem. Individuals with low self-esteem may feel they need to be perfect to be worthy of love, respect, or success. This can be a way to compensate for feelings of inadequacy. So for those of you who are feeling um, inadequate or you never got the love and the um, the strokes that you should have received as a, as a child, um, this may be speaking true and dear to you. Culture and societal expectations, we talked a little bit about that. They emphasize, they emphasize the, um, the illusion, I'm going to say illusion, of being perfect in various domains, particularly in physical appearance, professional success, what that looks like, and personal relationships, what that looks like. Um, and it pressures individuals to conform to these ideals. And sometimes it's really, really um, so misaligned with what people 
actually are, that they're trying to morph themselves into something they're not so they could fit into society. Professional demands are another thing that are interest, that's interesting too. In certain careers and industries, high performance and flawless execution um, in various domains such as uh, in professional fields such as medicine, law, sports may feel intense pressure to perfect due to the stakes involved. And let me tell you, by being in a healthcare industry and healthcare professional, um, perfectionism is an illusion as well, because trust me, as long as we are human beings, you know what, we could strive for perfection, but errors and mistakes and failures do happen, and sometimes at a cost. So the other thing too, comparisons and competition, we are in such a competitive environment, and we're constantly comparing ourselves to others to seem to be more perfect or successful. It's really a sick game that we've played our entire lifetimes. And at what cost? I mean, it, it's 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 just crazy making. The only thing that only person you could should be in competition with is yourself. And sometimes we have to look at that and set some boundaries and limitations about that as well, because you could drive yourself to to maddening steps. The other um, thing that comes out too is like in you know in reasons why someone would want to be perfect is having control and order and it's a way of maintaining um, control and order in their lives by being perfect now achieving perfection can create a sense of stability and predictability in an otherwise uncertain world yet if it's built on false premises within ourselves really what good is that and then sometimes the influence of the role models. We have a lot of role models in our world. And I have to laugh because sometimes it's like, all right, these people are, they have all the power and the control and their role models, and they do some really interesting things. And it's an observation that I've witnessed. And influential figures such as parents, teachers, mentors, or who exhibit perfectionism tendencies or command perfection can shape one's own drive towards perfectionism. So when we look at some of our role models in our world that, you know, the millennials right now that are coming through, it's like for those who are in that role, it's not about being perfect, a perfectionist. It's about being who you truly are and aligning with that. Yet it's also a wake up call to the people who are, putting you on a pedestal and trying to emulate what you are. So you're projecting who you are. So if you are a perfectionist, this is something that you may want to look at, especially if you're in a role model uh, thing. Are you really doing a huge service to your followers and even to humanity by showing up and pretending that everything's perfect when it's not? Also, Personal satisfaction. Some individuals find personal satisfaction and fulfillment in, in the process of perfecting their skills, work, or personal traits. The pursuit of perfection can be intrinsically rewarding for them, and also at the detriment, too, it could be very um, debilitating as well. So striving for excellence can be beneficial and important, but it's also important to recognize that perfectionism can also have negative consequences, such as increased stress, anxiety, burnout, impaired relationships. Finding a balance between striving for high standards and accepting imperfections is crucial for our overall well-being. So when we come back from our break, we're going to talk more about the toxic perfectionism that comes out for people. So you're listening to The Dr. Dolores Show. I'm Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. And we've been talking about, um, you know, help. <laughs> I'm a toxic perfectionism <laughs> person, and um, being perfect is ruining my life. So stay tuned, and when we come back, we'll talk more. Do you trust your instincts? Many of us don't. Yet this is the key to connecting to your innate healer within and your intuition. 
Tune in to the Dr. Dolores Show with nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer, Dr. Dolores Fazzino, to receive insights and tools to realign with your inner wisdom for lasting health and true wellness. Listen for the Dr. Dolores Show, Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Mountain, 12 p.m. Pacific, on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Dr. Dolores Show with Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to Dolores at drdoloresfazzino.com. Now, back to the program. Well, welcome back, everybody. You're listening to The Dr. Dolores Show. I'm Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer, your host. And we're on Inspired Choices Network. And this week on our episode, we're talking about help. Being perfect is ruining my life. And if this sounds like you, this is this is the episode that you need to listen to because we are taking a deeper dive into being perfect. And on the first uh, first segment, we shared a little bit about a channeling that I received this morning prior to the show about how um, when we are trying to be perfect, we're trying to fill a, a um, a hole, we're trying to fill the bucket that has a hole in it that we just can't seem to plug up. And it's just a constant interconnected, um, over, over, um, <laughs> over, I want to say stimulated response to, um, trying to make everything perfect and nice, nice on the outside, but in inside, on the inside, we're just, we're just, um, draining ourselves and, uh, causing burnout as well because of that. So um, before break, we kind of talked about what someone would we need to, uh, someone would want, why somebody would want to be perfect. Sorry, I'm losing my words here. But we're going to talk about in this segment more about like what we call toxic perfectionism. And there is such a thing where we have, and I'm just going to read a little bit here. Yes, you could suffer from toxic perfectionism and it's extreme form of perfectionism that could lead to significant negative effects on the individual's mental health, well-being and overall quality of life. And, you know, here are some of the things that you may want to take a look at if this sounds like you. Are you overcritical and uh, with your self-evaluation? It's like we are so self-critical, focusing on the flaws and mistakes rather than the achievements and strengths. Even though we've done all these massive achievements and stuff like that, you just focus on all of the, the things that went wrong instead of all of the things that went right. Does that sound like you? Okay, here's another one, fear of failure. And we talked a little bit about that. There's an intense fear of failure that causes people to become toxic perfectionists. Um, it's like you have the fear of making mistakes, which paralyzes you and prevents you from taking risks and trying new things. So are you uh, you're so in, 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 embossed in the fear of failure that you have what we call uh, paralysis analysis, that you're just afraid to even take a step forward? A lot of times we have procrastination and there's a fine line between that. Sometimes procrastination can be a good th good thing, but other times not so much. So the desire to achieve perfectionism can lead to procrastination as the fear of not being able to complete a task perfectly, which can cause delays and avoidance. It could be that, or sometimes it's just not the right time to be doing something. 
Okay, I think th there's a fine line. A lot of us walk a fine line there. So sometimes it's the inability, inability to celebrate our success, which we talked about. It's the all or nothing principle. Like if it's not going to be a whole, you know, the complete thing, or you know, it's it, I won't do it unless it's going to be complete. And then it's like nothing. Um, it's like the black and white thinking. So what I'm going to invite you to do is like, look at this from a different perspective. When you feel like that you're polarized by it's either black or white thinking, just know that there's always shades of gray in between and start embracing those shades of gray. Because when we polarize ourselves that it's either this way or the highway, we really rob ourselves of the possibilities of what's in the shades of gray in between those areas. And there's a lots of lots of possibilities there that probably we aren't even aware of because we're so focused on, you know, a, a complete yes or a complete no instead of the shades of gray. The other thing that um, manifestations of toxic uh, perfectionism are excessive stress and anxiety. When we're under constant pressure to be perfect, this can lead us to chronic stress and anxiety. As individuals feel they are always feeling short of their own or others' expectations. So we need to look at, that's a, that's a superficial, I'm going to say, symptom of something deeper that's going on. When we have stress and anxiety, it's it, it shows up superficially, and it's actually a cover-up of something deeper that's within us that needs to be addressed. So I invite people when they are feeling stressed or anxious to sit with that and just take a broader perspective. Okay, I'm feeling stress and anxiety, and why is that so? And just sit with that and see what comes up, because a lot of times that stress and anxiety may... Uh, lead to a really good gold nugget that needs to be looked at, addressed, and healed. And it's going into our shadow side, which sometimes people just are not comfortable doing that, but it's a necessity. So some consequences of toxic perfectionism is we have mental health issues. And just like I said, we are talking about um, stress and anxiety. And also what happens to OCD comes out of that, eating disorders, anxiety disorders, and also depression. It also, um, burnout occurs because of um, toxic perfectionism. It's like the relentless pursuit of perfection can lead to burnout characterized by physical or emotional exhaustion, reduced performance and feelings of detachment. And sometimes when we start getting cynical, we might be in the stages of burnout because it's like the joy of life has just went poof out the door. We have impaired in relationships. Um, it can, toxic perfectionism strains relationships because as perfectionists, we have unrealistic expectations of other people and ourselves as well. And it, you know, it leads to conflicts and a lack of connection. We may have low self-esteem, Despite our efforts, toxic perfectionists often have low self-esteem because they're constantly feeling inadequate and unworthy, thus feeding the cycle of needing to be perfect and thinking, well, if only I was perfect or I only did this, I only did this, we've got to stop that in its tracks. We have reduced productivity because paradoxically, <laughs> the result or the pursuit of perfection can reduce overall productivity as individuals. We may spend excessive time on minor details and avoid tasks altogether due to fear of imperfection. Any of you out there like that, that you just have this paralysis that you're so into the details that you don't, you're so focused that you have blinders on and you can't see the bigger picture. I invite you to go take a look at that and explore more shadow work around that. We have health problems, chronic stress and anxiety associated with toxic perfectionism can lead to physical health issues such as headaches, GI problems and a weakened immune system. And we know that when we have a weakened immune system due to stress, guess what? Our immunity goes down and it opens up the, the doorway for health challenges to happen as well. And that's like the end product of what is, or the tip of the iceberg of what's really going on underneath the surface. So how do we 
manage toxic per, uh, perfectionism, set realistic goals, focus on setting achievable and realistic goals rather than striving for unattainable perfection. Practice self-compassion. It always starts with us first. We need to be kind to ourselves and accept that making mistakes is a natural part of learning and growing. Trust me, we are all here on, on Earth, in the University of Earth, having a human experience. We're going to make mistakes. They're not mistakes. They're growth opportunities. They're opportunities for us to gain wisdom, to go deeper within ourselves, to heal that dark shadow side. Um, challenge our negative thoughts. Work on identifying and challenging the all or nothing or the cognitive distortions that contribute to our perfection. The all or nothing attitude needs to stop. It's not black or white. There's all shades of gray here on planet Earth. We choose sometimes to polarize it as good or bad, uh, negative or positive, love or hate. It's more than that. There's all these different uh, different uh, aspects and shades of gray, you know, 50 shades of gray. There was a reason why they, they called it that because there's all these different possibilities between the polarization of positive and negative. So I em embrace you and invite you to look at that as well. Seek support, talk to friends, family, mental health professionals that can help you develop co uh, healthier coping strategies. If this is something that you are interested in, I could definitely work with you. Just reach out to me. I'm there. Go to my website, drdoloresfazino.com, and um, sign up for a free discovery session. Focus on the process. Emphasize the importance of learning, of the learning process and effort rather than the end result. You know, it's a journey, not a destination. You're going to be growing and evolving and ascending on a daily basis. It's not a one and done. I, I just have to reiterate to people. Some people feel that, you know, as they move through their life, oh yeah, I already handled this, I've got this. Uh, well, okay, and how is that working out for you? Sometimes we forget that we're here to be immersed and to learn. And when we, discredit that or pop it from our heart into our head and let our ego get involved. We sometimes um, keep ourselves stuck small and um, not show up in all our essence and glory. So recognizing the signs of toxic perfectionism and taking the steps to address it can significantly improve and, you know, our mental health and overall quality of life and our well-being as well. So, you know, before we, you know, we're getting ready to go on a break and, you know, I know I kind of dumped a lot of stuff on you and it's like, you're probably feeling like you're in overwhelm or even, you know, a lot of what I'm sharing with you is really ringing true to you. Um, and if it, it, and if it is, just take a deep breath. You're not alone. Believe me, there are many people out there. I'm one of those too. I'm a recovering perfectionist. And trust me, it's a day-to-day -day nanosecond to nanosecond type of um, situation. I grew up in a household where for me to survive my childhood was to, you know, take on the illusion that, you know, I'm just going to have to be perfect. I am going to have to do everything right. And no matter how you know, perfect I was, it just was never enough because what was happening within me was there was a hole in my bucket that I was trying to constantly fill, but it was draining out by being perfect on the outside. And it really left me hollow and very empty inside because I was doing this dance on the outside and looking for that approval, that acceptance and that love and appreciation and worth from people outside of my environment, inclusive of my teachers, my parents, um, my family and even in, in society. So I invite you to look at where you have a hole in your bucket 
and learn how to patch that hole with the love, appreciation, true worth, and value that is you. So you could fill that bucket up and be complete and whole within yourself. So you're listening to The Dr. Dolores Show. I'm Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. And we're on Inspired Choices Network. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about help. Being perfect is ruining my life. And some things that you could do to assist yourself in shifting from embracing your imperfections and being perfect within yourself. Stay tuned. Do you trust your instincts? Many of us don't. Yet this is the key to connecting to your innate healer within and your intuition. Tune in to The Dr. Dolores Show with nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer, Dr. Dolores Fazzino, to receive insights and tools to realign with your inner wisdom for lasting health and true wellness. Listen for The Dr. Dolores Show, Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Mountain, 12 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Dr. Dolores Show with Dr. Dolores Fazzino nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to Dolores at drdoloresfazino.com. Now, back to the program. Well, welcome back, everybody. You're listening to the Dr. Dolores Show, and we're talking about health. Being perfect is ruining my life. And this is the topic of the day. And before break, we were talking about the things that um, cause toxic um, perfectionism. And I shared a little bit about myself and recovering perfectionists here. And I know you can do this as well. It's about really uh, being able to go deep into your shadow work and look at why those things happen. And, you know, sometimes those are true gifts and sometimes also they're coping mechanisms to get you through, um, you know, situations that when you're when you're in it, you're not able to deal with it. But when you're on the other side of it, looking back, you could say, yes, I can understand why I did that and why I strove to be perfection, a perfectionist, because maybe it was. Um, I was trying to seek the love and appreciation and, and worth and value that was on the outside of myself that were the illusion that I thought it was on the outside of myself when in essence, it's what's inside of yourself. So, you know, I think what we're going to talk about now is how does one recover from being perfect or being a perfectionist? And I think some of the interesting things that we need to re- remind ourselves about is about um, we need to recognize and understand our perfectionism, being self-aware, acknowledge that you have perfectionistic tendencies or maybe you're even one of those toxic perfectionists. I know I was. Um, Reflect on how you may manifest your thoughts and behaviors and how you manifest them because really we are powerful creators and a lot of times being unaware of this is what continues to perpetuate this. So once we become more aware, self-aware that, you know, I'm creating this for myself, it's it's almost like the light bulb goes on and we get to witness what is really happening in our lives and how we can shift and change that. Um, identify your triggers, determine which situations or environments trigger your perfectionist behaviors. You know, sometimes it might be in just 
going to family events where you have to put on the show that, or you have to overachieve to get the accolades and recognitions that other, you know, that other people give to you. It's a temporary fix. And maybe you feel, you feel like you're filling your bucket up, but still there's that hole in the bucket that's draining that out because you're not complete and whole within yourself. Interesting to interesting thing to, to realize and look at. Set realistic goals. We call them SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals that are realistic and attainable. And also look at doing, you know, sometimes we look at a goal as it's like this big elephant and it's just like, oh my God, how the heck am I going to eat this? Remember, how do we eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Set realistic, tangible, sh small goals that are going to be achievable so you can take your next step, baby steps. Shift your mindset, embrace imperfection. Accept that no one is perfect and that making mistakes is a natural part of growth and learning. Trust me, it is. The illusion on the outside that everything has to be perfect is that society has bought into that illusion that everything is a perf it has to be perfect in order to it for in order for it to be of value and worth. I call baloney on that because that is not the truth. That's the illusion. That's the illusion that we've been duped into buying and believing as the truth of the world and the truth for us. So it's about embracing imperfection and focusing on effort, not outcome. Value the effort you put into tasks rather than the perfect outcome. Celebrate the progress and effort. So it's a journey, not a destination. You're going to make achievements along this journey to the destination. Celebrate those. It's not a wait till we get there to, to no, celebrate life. It's time that we all start celebrating every moment that we're alive because guaranteed we don't know when our last moment's going to be. And if you, you know, wait to celebrate life at the, at the end, you might miss all those other um, milestones that we put off because we have to wait to the end. If anything, we should know that life is precious and unpredictable. You could be here one moment and gone the next. Practice self-compassion, be kind to yourself, treat yourself with the same kindness and understanding that you would offer a friend or even a stranger, because trust me, there are times that we are kinder to other people than we are to ourselves. Be mindful, be aware, Mindfulness is, the, is to stay present and reduce anxiety about past mistakes or future outcomes. When we are mindful, we are in the present moment. When we are in the present moment, that's all that matters. What we do in this moment has the capability of shifting the past and also creating the future. Chain, challenge the perfectionist thoughts. Um, this is what we call cognitive restructuring. And replace those thoughts with more balance and real realistic perfection uh, perceptions sometimes we have these heightened ideas that of what something should be and in reality it's an illusion and it's never attainable so reframe your failures as opportunities for learning and growth rather than reflections of your worth and ability we always talk about boundaries on the dr dolores show know your limits Recognize your limits and avoid overcommitting. So, you know, don't do and don't do things. Don't become a yes person and, and say yes when you mean no. It's about setting healthy boundaries. And sometimes it involves saying, no, this is not the right opportunity for me. Or it is not in alignment with where I want to go. Don't do things to please other people. For those people pleasers out there, I, um, I, can relate to you. Just prioritize your self-care. Self-care is important and setting healthy boundaries is about and is essential to self-care. Um, seek support, talk to others, seek professional help. And, you know, they say, take action despite fear. I think sometimes fear is the illusion and it is a setup that we put in our place or put in our space so that we have an opportunity not to show up. It's an excuse. Practice exposure. Gradually expose yourself to situations where you might fail or make mistakes. 
Learn to tolerate the discomfort and realize that consequences are not as desired as imagined. So you show up and so you fail. What are they going to do? Beat you up? <laughs> it's like that's on them. That's their perception of what's going on. When you're when you're showing up and you're putting yourself out there, congratulate yourself because you're taking a step forward. Focus on the bigger picture. Um, reflect on your board, your broader goals and, and values. Recognize that perfection is one area that does not define your overall worth and um, success. And just practice gratitude. It's so important. Maintain a healthy, balanced perspective. Self-acceptance self is so important. By implementing these strategies consistently, individuals and you can gradually reduce your perfectionistic tendencies and develop a healthier, more balanced approach. And with persistence and support, it's achievable. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to just do a little meditation because I think it's so important to ground what we kind of talked about so you're able to um, be in the present moment with this and just have an experience. So right now, I just invite you to find a quiet and comfortable place where you can sit down or lie down without interruptions. And just close your eyes and take a deep breath and allow yourself to relax. Let go of any tension in your body and mind. And this meditation will help you embrace your imperfections and release the need to be perfect. So just take a deep breath in through your nose, filling your lungs completely. And hold for a moment and then exhale slowly through your mouth. Take another deep breath in, and as you exhale, feel any stress or tension melting away. Continue to breathe deeply and naturally, allowing your body to relax with each, with each exhale. Feel the ground beneath you, supporting you. Imagine roots growing from your body into the earth, grounding and stabilizing you. As you continue to breathe deeply, bring your mind to a recent situation where you felt the need to be perfect. Notice how this makes you feel. Acknowledge any emotions that arise without judgment. It's okay to feel these emotions. Say to yourself, it's okay to be imperfect. I am human and I am enough just as I am. Place your hand gently over your heart. Feel the warmth and connection of this touch. Imagine a warm golden light radiating from your heart, spreading throughout your body. This light represents compassion, and self-acceptance. Repeat silently to yourself, I am worthy of love and acceptance. I embrace my imperfections with kindness and understanding. Allow this feeling of compassion to fill your entire being. Feel the tension and pressure of perfectionism dissolve in the warm, confronting, comforting light. Visualize yourself standing on a beach, holding a heavy bag filled with your need for perfection and self-criticism. Imagine walking towards the water's edge, feeling the cool sand beneath your feet. With each step, feel yourself becoming lighter and more free. When you reach the water, gently place the bag down and watch as the waves carry it away. 
dissolving it into the ocean. Feel a sense of relief and freedom as you let go of this burden. Allow yourself to be present in the moment, free from the need to be perfect. Take a few more deep breaths, feeling a sense of peace and acceptance. Bring your awareness back to your body and the space around you. When you're ready, slowly open your eyes. As you go about your day, carry with you the affirmation, I am perfectly imperfect and that's enough. Take a moment to appreciate yourself for taking the time to meditate and embrace your imperfections. Remember, the journey to self-acceptance is ongoing and each step you take is a powerful act of self-love. So when you're ready, just come back to this room and just enjoy the serenity and peace as we segue off to another break on the Dr. Dolores Show. So you're listening to the Dr. Dolores Show. I'm Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. And we have been talking about being perfect, help, being perfect is ruining my life on this episode of the Dr. Dolores show. So when we return, we'll talk, we'll wrap this up and talk more about things that you can do to become less of a perfectionist. Stay tuned. Do you trust your instincts? Many of us don't. Yet this is the key to connecting to your innate healer within and your intuition. Tune in to The Dr. Dolores Show with nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer, Dr. Dolores Fazzino, to receive insights and tools to realign with your inner wisdom for lasting health and true wellness. Listen for The Dr. Dolores Show, Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Mountain, 12 p.m. Pacific, on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Dr. Dolores Show with Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to dolores at drdoloresfazzino.com. Now, back to the program. Well, welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the meditation that we had in our last segment um you are listening to the dr dolores show on inspired choices network and we are talking about in this our topic this week help being perfect is ruining my life and before break we uh de delved into you know what things what people could do to become less of a perfectionist but also we did a guided meditation to allow you to embrace yourself as a complete and whole person and especially for those of us who are dealing with um, being perfect. So I invite you to go back and listen to that and to uh, be able to embrace that and be in the moment with that. So some of the takeaways that I'd like to, to offer you guys for hope, inspiration, and transformation for, for those of us who are recovering from or healing and recovering from being a perfectionist is this healing from perfectionists, Perfectionism is a transformative journey that can lead to more fulfilling and a more balanced life. Some of the takeaways that can offer you some hope, inspiration, and transformation on this path are embrace imperfection as part of growth. Shift your perspective. Understand that imperfections and mistakes are not signs of failure, but opportunities for growth and learning. Celebrate progress. Focus on the progress that you make rather than the end result, because remember, life is a journey of small victories and improvements and not a destination. And have self-compassion. Have compassion for yourself as part of growth. Um, treat yourself with kindness and understanding when you fall short of your expectations. No beating self up. This is, you know, we're here on earth journeying to become and 
and receive our doctrine in becoming human. And part of the human journey is to um, experience growth. And it's, you know, we label it as not being perfect, but these are opportunities that are going to allow your soul to grow at a deep and profound level that what we're experiencing, how we, how we embrace them is the key. So just have self-compassion. Cultivate a balanced and fulfilling life. Set realistic goals, prioritize well-being, and find joy in the journey because it's all about joy and it's about enjoying the journey rather than fleeting an outcome or you know being fixated on an outcome and fleeting the journey. There's no bypass here. You have to go through the journey in order to get to the destination. And lastly, building resilience through connection and support. Seek support. You know, it's community and connection is big right now. And practice vulnerability. You know, being vulnerable and allowing yourself to share your imperfections and challenges with others allows you to foster deeper connections and help you realize that you are not alone in this experience. And I just want to leave you with this. Um Remember that perfection is an illusion and striving for it can hinder your happiness and growth and rob you of the joy of life. Embracing your imperfections and valuing the journey over the destination can lead you to a richer, more meaningful life and can even, um, and, and it, it, it'll, it's enough as you, you're enough as you are and your worth is not determined by the flawless performance, but by your unique qualities and the love and effort that you put into everything you do. So with that being said, remember that life's beauty lies in the imperfections. Embrace your journey, unique journey, celebrate the progress and be kind to yourself along the way. You are, your worth is not measured by your perfection, but by the love, effort and authenticity, authenticity that you bring into the world. Keep moving forward one imperfect step at a time. So next week, um, we're going to be talking about being awake. You know, many of us are either awake, awakening, or still asleep. And for those of you who are awakening, this episode is for you. This is called I'm Awake, Now What? So on this illuminating episode of the Dr. Dolores Show, viewers are invited on a journey to explore the profound question many find themselves asking upon waking up, now what? Um, Dr. Dolores, with her characteristic warm, warmth and wisdom, dwells into the in intricacies of starting the day with intention, purpose, and positivity. So it's all about what do we do next now that we're awake? You know, many of us have woken up from the illusion that everything is outside of us and what is outside of us is the truth, when in fact we've been fed a bunch of baloney over the years, and we bought into the belief system that things are on the outside of us instead of on the inside of us. So next week, we're going to take a deeper dive into now you're awake. Now, what do we do of how to maneuver through that and how to transition in, from the external to the internal and how to really grasp and reunite with our soul essence which is our true self and true self-worth and true truth of everything of who we are so we don't come with a you know a guidance journal to do that and a lot of us flounder thinking okay we're all alone and life is not working the way it used to or it had been up until this point and now i have no reference point for that so if that is you please come join us and listen to our episode, I'm Awake, Now What?, where you'll gain some insight and now, you know, knowledge and wisdom and how you could reconnect with who you are at a soul's level. So we're on the Dr. Dolores Show. I'm Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. And just remember to be kind to yourself. Life is a journey not a destination and put the joy back into your life and to your living so see you next week and remember be kind to yourself Take care.
Thank you for listening to the Dr. Dolores Show. Dr. Dolores returns Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Mountain, 12 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, remember to be kind to yourself and create your best life. You are worth it.